Hello my soccer universe, let's preview the big one. First things first, yes I'm a Milan fan and yes I'm wearing an Inter jersey. Um, honestly I'm a little bit begrudgingly more in the Inter camp for this final. Uh, for more than one reason, but one of them is that I want Italy to win at least, Serie A to win at least one big title and Inter the last chance in that sense. And it also works out with the background because I'm hiding here another Inter jersey so there you go and I actually begrudgingly I do like this one quite some it's gonna be an interesting final but it's an interesting final I think I can see only two ways that it's going we'll talk about that uh, in, a, in a bit I either see Inter sneaking to a 1-0 victory somehow by sheer luck or the best team in Europe and yes Manchester City are the best team in Europe and what and uh, all the concerns you might have with the construction of how Manchester City have have been kind of constructed all that aside this is a brilliant side that have been played brilliantly that have never really been challenged in this Champions League season and for that reason most probably including me see a relatively clear Manchester City victory but we'll talk about the intricacies of that game um, in uh, towards the end of the video I first want to say where's this final be played we know it by now it's played in Istanbul and Istanbul as we know is the capital no it's not the capital of Tur Tur Turkey but it's the largest city in Turkey uh, maybe the capital in mind because it's it's by far the most important city in Turkey overall historically a uh, also a very important city was being first Byzantium Constantinople before uh, being called Istanbul having three names was already the capital of the Eastern uh, Roman M M Empire and the Byzantine Empire uh, there is so much history attached to this place uh, I personally have nev never been although at one point I was close to going there but just on uh, the location on the Golden Horn the many sites and uh, you know the hustle and bustle it's kind of on the transition between Europe and Asia in fact one side is in Europe the other one is in Asia so that makes it a very very interesting place the stadium that is played in, I have had to say, is rather underwhelming. It's the Atatürk Olympic Stadium in uh, that lies more or less on the outskirts. It's a horrendous stadium for a final, if you ask me. Yes, it has the capacity, and yes, it hosted a Champions League final before. I don't like that this is one of those old uh, style large bowls with a running track around it. I am seriously gutted that it's played in this horrible, horrible stadium. Especially when in Istanbul itself you have uh, at least two if not three other Not as big but other really really cool stadiums that could get get you an atmosphere That is for me the one downside for that Okay, the referee for this game is none other than Simon Marciniak uh, Currently considered the best referee around. He's of course from Poland um, And has already officiated the World Cup final this season So he is having quite a good season whenever there has to be a big name There's a big name fixture. He's called up. I think he even uh, re refereed the return like between uh, Inter and Milan uh, Showing you he is he is definitely a big weight personally with him I think he is a very authoritative re referent there has been actually some um, misgivings uh, because he showed up at a very right-wing rally which he quickly defended himself and you know uh, apologized big time so I think it was an honest way that an agent booked him there in Poland but that could have gotten him in trouble for sure the one I actually was at a game that he refereed in 2019 where I still think the penalty that he gave against Lusk against Bruges was ridiculous but I uh, concede the fact that he has been working himself really up and become a super referee overall now when it comes to the comparison between those two teams historically honestly there is no comparison as much as we will see that City are favored in this final over Inter as much Inter are the bigger weight I mean just look at the championships 19 versus 9 domestic championships cup wins also Inter dominate then most importantly Inter have three Champions League and three UEFA Cups 
which is now the Europa League. Uh, there is a legacy behind Inter that Manchester City cannot live up. The only European trophy for City was a solitary Cup Winners Cup, I think, in '67. In the final, they won against the Polish team, I want to say Gunnik Zabrze, in Vienna, of all places. So, just by pure status, there is no comparison between those two teams. I want to make that absolutely, absolutely clear. However, when it comes to the current squad and currently, well, I mean, simply the market value of City is twice as much as Inter's. That tells right there the story that uh, all the successes of Man Man and Manchester City are recent successes. I mean, we know that they have now uh, won, f um, was it five out of the last uh, six uh, Premier League trophies? So that's more than half of their current tally already and winning two more before that so um it's a very 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 recent success for manchester city uh and they have built an amazing squad i also want to say while they have splashed cash it also has to be said that in the last few years they have gone for sustainability as well it's they have never been the highest spenders yes they bought the Grealish, but they got Holland for a, a, a deal, but they always could sell on players and actually have a net uh, zero spend. That is something I think is underreported because, yes, I'm, I, I'm, I myself, there's a lot of financial doping, there's a lot of allegations going on. But by this, for the squad building itself that Guardiola has done, Guardiola and his management stuff, uh, it is actually way more... Um, um, economically sound than one might suggest. Uh, we also see in the ever average age that both teams are not that different overall. However, um, it's definitely Inter is the older one. Uh, old slash experienced. Most of the Inter players, I'm not saying on the Champions League have been there, done that, but uh, they they are wily veterans of the game, which might be uh, which might be the one little thing that might be in favor for them, because most of the big name players for City, and I'm looking at Grealish, I'm looking at a Holland, uh, potentially even you know a uh, uh, Foden or so, they don't have the 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 the, the, the experience uh, playing than some of the Inter players do have. However, internationals, uh, it actually is much more even, but however, the, just when you look at the mark, mark market value, the quality that City have, it just far outweighs Inter's. So again, we have a European heavyweight on the one hand in Inter, and we have a recently rich team that will make an interesting uh, matchup for sure. Um, if I look at the pathways to the final, it also tells the story. If I look at Manchester City, um, not as good as a record as West Ham had had in the Conference League, but City are still unbeaten. And what's even more, except for the Dortmund uh, tie, all of them were super decisive. Sevilla, 7-1 on ag 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 aggregate. Copenhagen, 5-0 on aggregate. Leipzig, 8-1. Bayern 4 1 and the Real Madrid 5 1. And it's especially the latter two. Those were the only two challengers that one would have made out in Europe to see Manchester City out, and they both got in the end steamrolled. So uh, that is a very, very, very impressive record. Uh, curiously enough, though, in away games, City have only won one. So they have most of those wins came at the Etihad. The final is not played at the Etihad. That could be an interesting facet of that. Inter's path to, 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 to the final, uh, I don't want to say it's not equally impressive, but it's impressive nonetheless. I mean, the first one, the two matches against Bayern Munich, that's maybe the one where I make a check mark and say, this is the sign that Inter it will not match up well with Manchester City. Because Manchester City destroyed the Bayern Munich, but the Bayern Munich that Inter faced was a completely different beast. This was still in the fall uh, when they played a Julian Nagelsmann side that was quite really really gelling and their Inter never really stood a chance 
However, where uh, Inter really shone is in the tie against Barcelona, where they got the win in the home leg and then really fought hard and probably should, should even won the game at the camp now. It was only a 3-3. That actually saw something saw, saw through that Inter came out of this group was a surprise. Then, admittedly, the draw fell their way. They beat Porto in probably the closest tie of the entire knockout stage, where uh, Porto hitting the post and everything left and right. But when they went to Benfica and won their 2-0, yes, Benfica was entering a blip of the season right there. But ahead of that one, everyone would have favored Benfica. Benfica were a team that was flying and Inter easily got past them. L easily. The 3-3 in the return leg, it was 3-1. And there was no chance for uh, Benfica. This was the wily Italians getting it done. And then Milan was always going to be a horrific matchup. I said it. I was, I knew that Milan will match up well against Na Napoli. They match up horribly against Inter. And that showed in the first 50 minutes where Inter killed the tie. With a little bit of luck, Milan could have gotten it. But this was all, all, all Inter. And so... Inter are in the final. As I said, I think on the based on the group stage, this was so surprising. It was Varad impressive. Yes, the draw fell their way. They eliminated both uh, Portuguese giants uh, with staunch defending and uh, being lethal on the counter attack, which is also Inter's game. But they made it. And they are there for a reason. Uh, so, yeah. When I uh, look now to the match, first of all, let's talk jerseys. You already saw it uh, pre uh, previously. Both teams will play in their home jerseys. Uh, Manchester City, uh, although I read at one point that they will play the new ones, I, I was always doubtful because UEFA wants that you register one jersey and you wear it the entire season. So Man Manchester City will wear their, uh, the 22-23 jersey, at least to all, the most of the information that I could find. Inters is very interesting also playing the home jersey and I think anything else would have surprised me. Uh, yes, I could see a case being made for the yellow one, but on it, honestly, it will provide enough contrast. Um, they have a new sponsor. Paramount Plus for this and I kind of managed to put this in there. Uh, interesting enough, the two teams have never met on, on a competitive level before. There were only two friendlies uh, in the 2010s and 2011s where each team won, won three nil. So uh, there's not much between those two on a historical context as well. Um, now, if I think about this game, both teams have the full squad available. I literally think, well, uh, you have with Onana and Bastoni people on the back that can actually hold uh, and probably uh, the fry, uh, that could hold the Manchester City defense at, at bay. For I, for instance, don't see that Acerbi has uh, anything against Holland. There is just no, no way. If, if, if it's a one on one, Holland will run, run through. However, I think that Inter will keep it tight on the, on the back with probably five on the back and then you know you will get your uh if Di Marco can provide as much weight as Dumfries on the other side in the attacking threat then Inter do have a chance Inter also have a relatively uh experienced midfield that yes they're all up there in age but they're all good players so you know there is a Mikitari, there's a Brozovic there's a Chalonoglu who is playing his home stadium the other thing, uh, that there are two factors that actually speak in favor of Inter. Uh, weird ones. The last time West Ham United won a cup in 65, who won the European Cup? Inter. And then the other one that I got to during, during the conference League final, every winner this season had a player, a decisive player from the Banta era of, of Milan. And the only former Milan player in, the entire, in all of these two squads is actually the vermin, as I call him, uh, Hakan Chalanoglu, who is playing in his home, uh, in um, the, it's not his country of his birth because he comes from Germany, but he is a Turkish international. If Chalanoglu scores a goal, watch out. If Chalanoglu scores a goal. 
Um, it's also in interesting that Inter will employ a two-pronged attack with uh, Lautaro and Edin Dzeko. Edin Dzeko uh, basically there to hold up and um, distribute play in, in a way. There's Di Marco and of course Dumfries that can ca uh, uh, come in with crosses. But if I'm honest, I'm clutching Astros here. I just can I the old the I see here a slight pathway for Inter. However, I see two coaches. And I see two coaches that like to tinker. However, in the last few weeks, Guardiola, we know the lineup. He is playing exactly who he has been playing. I even think Ederson will be in goal, although it would be interesting if he puts Ortega in there. Uh, but that doesn't really matter. I think there's not much uh, difference in quality between those two guys. Ederson ha just having more experience. I just see that the Bruyne can thread a dangerous pass that everyone will concentrate on Holland, will o which will open everyone else up, whether it's a Bernardo Silva or it's a Rodri. Uh, it was always that uh, in all the Champions League games where ever City have won so much that Holland was more or less a non-factor. -non he was uh, taken out by the defense, but that exactly opened up all the other dangerous players. It doesn't look good for Inter. As I said, my clutching on straws is that Inter maybe can hold it tight. And I really, really am wondering about that. They are good on the counter-attack. And they're usually lethal on that one as well. Although the, the spell where they were not winning for such a long, long time, they actually wasted chances left and right. But they have been getting together and Inter have been on a really good run. But City have been on an even better run. Everything that you can compare, um, it doesn't compare well. It really doesn't com compare well. Even when I think about the benches and uh, Coach Inzaghi is known for pre-planning all his substitutions. And he uses them all. Unlike Pep, who barely uses any as of late. Even there, yes, Lukaku has been great for Inter. But City can bring on a Julian Alvarez. They can bring on a Phil Foden. Among other, amongst others, it is just, there is no comparison between those two. So as I said, if I think about this game, the only way I, I mean, and I'm clutching here on straws if I want to see in, in intervene, and this is either they hold the tight at the launch one car country and fr frustrate City, and Onana has having, is having a great game, or, and I think he's a great shot stopper, but he's not an, uh, a goalkeeper that like uh, Courtois in last year that can save you a game like that. But he's very good in the build-up play. And he's very good with his feet. And then you hit him on the counter-attack. Uh, the other thing is, of course, those two weird facts with the last time West Ham won and with the former Milan players. But we know that this doesn't count for much. And then uh, there is one last one. That when I look back, uh, w how many lopsided Champions League finals were there? And when we speak lopsided, I mean, my model has City as a 63% favorite. That's huge. It's two-thirds winning City. Uh, I can think of just a few where it was that lopsided. Um, come to mind is, of course, Bayern Munich against Chelsea. Potential Real Madrid against Bayer Leverkusen. Uh, Juve against Dortmund. Milan against Marseille. What do those finals have all in common? There was a huge favorite, but the underdog won. That might be another factor, speaking for Inter. However, I said it before, I can see only two ways. Either Inter win it 1-0, and I've said this now often enough, or just City get the goal and just are the machine that they are and score and score and score. This could get ugly for Inter. Uh, if City find the form that they had that against Real Madrid, this could get really, really ugly for Inter. Because they don't stand a chance. Uh, and for me, the most remarkable thing is that Erling Haaland has not been scoring a lot. But City have been scoring a lot. And that's usually the mark of a really good, good team. That uh, uh, This is the one thing I really like about Haaland is he's a team player. He does not go for the in, in, in individual record. He scores enough. But if the other score, he's as happy for them. And this is what makes him so dangerous. As I said, it's a weird feeling. Um, 
I also think this city will win this one and will complete the treble. By the way, if Inter win it, they also get a very they get a weird treble of Supercoppa, Coppa Italia, and um, of course the Champions League. So yeah, those are my thoughts on the final. Please let me know what you think about it. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, and we'll talk about the review of the final the day after. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the little bell icon so to get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye!